on a bright and sunny day in the town of Osloberg as Francis peered out the window. Grandpa Jebediah. Francis was surprised to see Grandfather Jebediah standing in the middle of the street with many dogs attacking his frail figure. His hair wasn't in braids, but hung in stringy brown strands on his neck, and he was old. Francis reluctantly ran to Grandfather Jebediah, for he was embarrassed to be seen with such an old Amish man, and felt as if he should sink right through the pavement. Oh! What's happened? You fainted, Pop. Yes, it seems that way, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just too old and lonesome. Grandpa Jeb, would it be okay if I bring my friends to see you in your interesting Amishness every day after school? Oh, my darling Ingrid, of course! Francis, why don't you also bring some of your friends over to visit? Uh, no, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Grandfather Jebediah was furious with Francis. Then one day, after school, Francis' friends appeared magically at the door to see Grandpa Jebediah. He told them many stories of his young Amish years, and they all laughed heartedly at his jokes. Francis was pleasantly surprised at how well they responded to Grandpa Jebediah's queerness. They came every day thereafter. Grandpa Jebediah's health was failing as each day passed. He seemed to get a little more sluggish as the days went by. One day, on a Sunday, Grandpa Jebediah called Francis into the bedroom and finally told the intriguing story of his suspenders. Francis, sometimes, when you're a man, you like to wear stretchy pants in your room alone, just for fun. But that's not the point. I have called you here today to tell you about my suspenders. They are precious in many ways, and this is the story. Once, your great-great-great-great-great uncle cousin, Olaf, was in the midst of a treacherous snowstorm. It was the kind of snowstorm when the snow is heavy and wet, thus making large mounds of mud and slush on the road. He trudged along, and with every step his pants slid lower and lower down his buttocks. It made him increasingly afraid that the nearby ladies would see his undergarments. But then, as suddenly as the fairy godmother, his pants fell to the ground! But before he had time to reunite his trousers with his booty, he saw a woman approaching him. He spun around to face the approacher, but he could not see the face of the mysterious personage for the snowstorm was getting increasingly tedious. The woman said, Take these suspenders and suspend your pantaloons over your bum. Your great-great-great-great-great-uncle cousin Olaf quickly snatched the suspenders. He thanked the woman and attached them to his snow-filled soggy bottoms. But when your great-great-great-great-great-uncle-cousin Olaf's eyes turned back in the direction of the mysterious woman, she was gone! These suspenders have been handed down from generation to generation. There are two rules you must abide by. One! Never, never, ever let these suspenders be even so much as brushed by the female hand. These are strictly for men. Two! You must travel to the forest barn in the upper, upper corner of Lancaster, and while wearing the suspenders, you must frolic and enjoy the well-suspended pants that are tightly secured around your little leggies. So Grandpa Jebediah handed Martin the suspenders and told him they must not be tarnished. Martin was a boy of style and was very hip. He was reluctant to be bestowed upon with the suspenders because he thought they were too old mannish. But nevertheless, he took them and quickly darted out of the house. He traveled to Lancaster and did his duty. When he returned home, Grandpa Jebediah was dead, in bed. From that day on, Francis couldn't wait to have a grandson of his own and have the privilege to let his own offspring's offsprings be... 
suspended.